in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. The vampire is described as one of the most universally feared undead creatures, known for their power, intellect, and thirst for mortal blood. They typically kept the appearance they had in life, though with paler skin, fangs, red eyes, and a distinct lack of shadow or reflection. They were known to engage in greedy, excessive behavior, hoarding symbols of wealth and power which included mortal servants and blood bags for their amusement and sustenance. They were known to be able to dominate the weak-willed mind, and even animals of the night could be bent to their will. When a vampire drained a mortal of their lifeblood, the creature could then be turned into a thrall. The standard vampire has an AC of 16 and 144 hit points, with a normal movement speed. They have amazing stats across the board and boast saves in dex, wisdom, and charisma that make saves against spellcasters pretty easy. They're highly perceptive and stealthy, making them excellent hunters and stalkers, and are resistant to non-magical attacks. They're innate shape changers, allowing them to use their action to polymorph into a tiny bat or a medium mist. When in bat form, they can't speak and have a fly speed of 30, making this mainly a travel or spying form. When in mist form, they can basically only move, but are able to pass through tiny spaces and occupy the same space as another creature, though they only have 20 feet of movement and cannot pass through water. In this form, they're immune to non-magical damage except for damage from sunlight. They have three legendary resistances and the trait Misty Escape, in which when they drop to 0 HP, they turn into their mist form and try to reach their resting place. They have to do this within two hours or risk permanent destruction. When they get there, they transfer form back into their vampire form and are paralyzed until they regain at least 1 HP, which takes approximately an hour. During combat, they regain 20 HP at the start of their turns unless they're in running water, direct sunlight, or have been hit with radiant damage or holy water in the round. They can also spider climb on all surfaces. They have several vampiric weaknesses in that they cannot enter a residence without permission, they take damage from ending their turns in running water, and they can be permanently paralyzed if stabbed through the heart when in their resting place, and they take damage and have disadvantage on attacks and ability checks when in direct sunlight. Note that this is only caused by sunlight, and not spells like daylight or other similar effects. They can do a multi-attack of one bite and one unarmed attack. The unarmed attack deals nominal damage, or allows them to grapple a target on a hit for going that damage. And their bite can only be performed on a willing creature, an incapacitated creature, or a creature grappled by the vampire. This attack deals nominal piercing damage and 3 to 18 necrotic damage that lowers the target's HP maximum by the same amount. If a target dies from this, and is then buried in the ground, they rise up as a vampire vampire spawn the next night. The vampire can choose instead to use its action to charm a target, prompting a DC 17 wisdom save. If failed, they treat the vampire as an ally, following its suggestions and orders, and becoming a willing bite victim. The vampire can also cast Children of the Night, a once per day ability that calls 2d4 swarms of bats or rats when indoors, or 2d6 wolves when outside. These creatures arrive in 1d4 rounds, and act as allies of the vampire until dead or dismissed. Vampires also have three legendary actions per round. Round. They can move or make an unarmed strike, or for two of the three actions, they can make one bite attack. Before getting into strategy, I would first point out that there is a certain level of trust needed to run this encounter well. Players that know about vampire weaknesses will be tempted to metagame, and this kind of ruins the encounter. I personally allow my players to make checks to see if their characters would know about certain weaknesses and traits of vampires. As a DM, I would use the vampire as a boss monster for mid-level players, alongside minions such as their thralls. In my personal opinion, the vampire can either be the bane of players, or an underwhelming encounter. It relies heavily on saving throws being failed to do real damage or crowd control, and therefore against a party with high saves or very good rolls, the vampire can feel kind of underwhelming. To start combat, I would have the thralls of the vampire rush the players, especially the ranged spellcasters and healers. I would have the vampire activate Children of the Night and make distance between itself and players. In its next turn, I would have it target the tank of the party with charm. If successful, I would order this player to protect the vampire at all costs, and have it stay close to the vampire at all times, creating a ready-to-use blood bag for the vampire whenever it needs healing. The vampire should be using its movement and move legendary action to avoid melee players, as well as to close distance with ranged spellcasters. Though they have good saves and legendary resistances to avoid most of the higher level spells, damage spells will still rip the vampire apart. I would have the vampire use its turns to attack with a grapple and then a bite attack, or to cast charm on additional players. I would use two legendary actions each round to get a free bite attack only if the vampire is hurt and has a willing charmed creature to get some free healing and deal some free damage. 
The overall strategy for the vampire will change based on what allies it has, whether or not it has any charmed creatures enthralled, and the overall environment. But the basic strategy should be to charm as many players as possible and use them, vampire spawns, and summoned animals to chip away at the health of other players until the vampire has the upper hand. As soon as the party is weakened and running out of attacks, I would switch these tactics to striking them down one by one, grappling and then biting wherever possible. In mythology, the vampire is now seen as an overall umbrella term for a multitude of mythical monsters that live off of consuming mortal blood. While all cultures have creatures that fit this descriptor, the myths that are most associated with the contemporary vampire are those from Europe and popularized in Western Europe during the 18th century, when mass hysteria over such creatures reached its height. The term itself was first recorded in the early 18th century from terms such as vampire, vampire, and umpire, and seems to have been translated in almost every European language. While there are too many particular myths to cover here, all of them share some very specific traits. Vampires in European myth are usually described as pale, bloated, or corpse-like with red or purple eyes indicating burst blood vessels, with blood seeping from their facial orifices. They were typically associated with nocturnal animals, with some legends saying that they could control these creatures, and of course, all of them consume blood to keep themselves alive and healthy. Regardless of the individual background, whether Nordic, Slavic, Western, or otherwise, the fear of undead creatures rising to consume the blood of the living is relatively universal, and the ways to defeat them almost all include rituals performed on dead bodies, such as staking them while they're in their graves, leaving garlic and spices around grave sites, and burning bodies that are showing any quote-unquote sign of vampirism. The modern version of the vampire that we all usually picture is not nearly as old as the ancient myths, and is instead inspired by Bram Stoker's 1897 book Dracula, the quintessential vampire tale. In it, the titular vampire is described as a charismatic, powerful nobleman who is eventually outed as an undead vampire, who seduces and tricks people into becoming his slaves, vampire brides, and blood bags. This charismatic, aristocratic man hiding its true form as a feral, blood-sucking animal became the standard for all vampires going forward, and the vampire has become a staple of gothic horror and fantasy. Comparing the monster to the myth, we find that D&D takes inspiration mostly from Bram Stoker's Dracula. The vampires in most myths are feral creatures, undead who attack indiscriminately and without intellect, but the Dracula vampire and the D&D vampire are charismatic warriors who beguile and charm their prey, before unleashing their animal side upon them, seeking to slate their thirst, and also expand their base of power. If you enjoyed that video, please leave a like and comment below, and consider subscribing to the channel. You can also join the Patreon for $1 a month to access videos days before they're posted here, as well as other exclusive stuff like short stories, videos, and more.